So it's 2022 and a lot of you guys are still looking towards playlists to help you grow out your streams, grow out your fan base, get you new listeners, all that cool stuff. And while I have my own thoughts on where I think playlists fit in the grand scheme of music marketing, I'll just save those thoughts for another day. But what I want to do in this video is give you guys a tool that will help you start to build out your own playlist network so that you don't have to rely as much on playlist pluggers, playlist pitchers, and you can start to have a lot more control and autonomy on your playlist process so you can make it move smoother, faster, and much cheaper for yourself. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Corey. I'm a music marketer and co-founder of Country Brand Agency, a content consulting and music marketing agency that's worked with artists like 24K Golden, Macy Gray, Alessa Capelli, Tana Mailman, and a bunch of other really dope artists. And my goal with this channel is to give you all the music marketing sauce that I can so that you can make your dreams into a reality. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the video. It's the mat work. Now, before I jump into this tool, I do want to preface it by saying that this is not a playlist network this is not a website that you can submit your music to and get yourself on the playlist but what this is is a tool that will help you find playlists that are applicable to you your genre and the type of music that you make now my goal with giving you this tool is that you can get a lot more control and autonomy over your playlisting process because what i've come to see in the playlisting space is that a lot of you guys are spending money on these playlist pictures that you know, just to kind of say easily, are using playlists that if you put in a little bit of work, you could find and cut the middleman out of and just save that money towards these playlists or your other music marketing goals. And you would spend a lot less money on that side on hiring these people. This will also help you to define which playlist you want to work with, give you the opportunity to build a personal relationship with them. So that way, the next time you want to get playlisted, things should move a lot faster for yourself. And once again, you won't have to rely on people to pitch you to these people and burn a lot of that time there. So here we are guys inside of the platform and the tool is called Playlist Supply. Now you may remember it from a previous review video that I did a while back, but I did wanna update it and show you guys some of the new features that they added and give you my updated thoughts and opinions on the tool and where I think it fits into your overall music marketing tool base. Now, out the gate, Playlist Supply has a really clean user experience and a really clean platform. And that is personally one of my favorite features about this platform. It's not overly complicated. It's not, you know, difficult to use. It's not made with music marketers and these super techie people in mind. No, it's made with regular artists, regular people who are looking for these playlists in mind. So they make it pretty simple to use. Now, let me preface once again that this tool will not help you to get onto playlists, but it will help you find playlists that you can pitch yourself to so that you can start to build out your own playlist network and your own list of playlist curators that make sense for your music, your genre, and the type of people you want to associate yourself with. Got it? Cool. Let's get into it a little bit deeper. Now, one of the key things about Playlist Supply is that you can search playlists based on certain keywords and criteria that they allow you to search by, right? So those criteria look like this. You can search playlists that have an email in the description. You can search ones that have an Instagram. You can search ones that have similar artists listed or search ones that have a Twitter handle or some type of social handle listed in their bio. Now, what this does is it allows you to not waste your time looking for playlists, right? Doing playlist research and playlist digging just to find a playlist that you can't even get in contact with. I know personally I've been there. Like I've spent hours looking for playlists just to be like, oh, this one looks perfect. And then I can't find anything for them. I can't find a Facebook page. I can't find an email. I can't find a Twitter page for them. And then that's just like 40, 45 minutes of my time gone, wasted, burned out. So what this allows you to do is to filter out playlists based on criteria that makes sense for you. Now, the other thing that you can do with this platform is you can search playlists based on particular keywords. So those keywords could be the type of genre of music that you make. They could be similar artists. They could be moods. They could be video games. They could be movies, right? This playlist tool or this pitching tool will allow you to find playlists based on the keywords that you want to find playlists that are, that are centered around. So I'm going to do a quick search just to show you guys what that looks like. So I'm going to look for rap playlists, right? I feel like there are a lot of rap playlists that should make it easy for me. And then I'm going to search out playlists that have an email. I personally prefer to reach out to playlist curators through email. It gives me a nice little paper trail. You know, it looks a lot more professional. Um, you can do DMs, you know what I'm saying? I've done uh, playlist pitching through the DMs before, but I personally like to do it through email. So I'm going to have my search uh, set to email. And then I'm going to click exact search because I only want playlists that have rap in their handle or in their bio somewhere and that have an email associated with it. And then I'm going to click search and see what it comes up with. So as you can see, guys, it's still doing a little bit of a search, but look at the list that is built out for me so far, right? So currently it's put together a list of 370 playlists, about eight pages worth of playlist contacts. Um, and it's still searching. We'll see where it's at by the time I finish this part of the video, but 370 playlists that I can search through. 
Now, out of the gate, you can see down here on this chart, it gives you a little bit of basic information about those playlists, right? So you have the name of the playlist, you have how many followers it has, you have how many tracks are in, this, uh, in the playlist, the popularity score of the playlist, the date that it was last modified, who owns it, and then the email, right? That sweet, sweet email that we're looking for so that we can actually contact these playlists. Now, what I would personally recommend you do once you have your list built out is filter the playlist by um, a couple of different things, right? You can either filter them out by followers so you can make sure you're putting yourself on the biggest playlist, right? So you can see if I click followers, it'll organize it based on uh, playlists from smallest to largest. So this one has zero followers, three. And if I click it again, it'll do the biggest one with Jazz Rap having about 987,000 followers and then so on, right? You can filter it out based on how many tracks are on the playlist, right? So if I click it, uh, if I click on tracks, it show me playlists that have the most in it, right? So this one right here has over 4,000 songs in it. And if I click it again, it'll do least to biggest and then show me playlists that have, you know, this one has four in it. This one has six. Now, the reason you may want to filter it out by how many tracks are on the playlist is because that will give you um, an idea of the likelihood of your song actually getting heard. So if you're in a playlist that has only four songs in it, then chances are you're going to get heard in that playlist. But if you're in a playlist that has, you know, 4000 in it, then that chance decreases a little bit more. Right. So. You may want to find a good middle ground for you or just as you're working with these different playlist curators, negotiate for a higher spot on the playlist. But it is something I like to filter out by um, and take into consideration before reaching out to a playlist. And then the last thing that I would recommend you do is filter out the playlist based on when they were last modified. Right. So if I click on last modified, it'll show me the ones that were the most recently updated. So this one right here was just updated yesterday as I'm making this video. And if I click it again, it'll show me the ones that were you know, updated um, a long ass time ago, pretty much. This one was updated 98 days ago. This one was 97 days ago, 949. And the reason that you would care about this is because it will let you know how active is the playlist, right? So if you're finding a playlist curator and they haven't updated their playlist in 949 days, right? Like why even waste your time? <laughs> you know, like they're clearly not keeping the playlist active um, and you shouldn't even bother uh, wasting your time with them. But if you see that they're being active as of recent, they're still currently updating their playlist, then that lets you know that, hey, this person is still looking at submissions. They're still keeping the playlist fresh and active, which means that they're still probably actively growing the playlist and they will be a good one for you to reach out to. Now, the other thing you can take into consideration is the popularity score. So similar to the other stats, you click it, it'll, uh, it'll order them based on least popular to most popular. And if you click it again, it'll give you most popular and then down, right? So you can also take that into consideration. Um, I'm not 100% sure on how the popularity score is calculated, which is why I personally don't take it into the most consideration. Um, but the biggest things I look at are following orders, how many tracks are on the playlist, and then when was the playlist last modified, right? So once you've built out your playlist list or you've had Playlist Supply go through and filter out those playlists based on your criteria, the next thing you can do is you can save all these playlists and add it to your own playlist database. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can either click the blue plus button next to the playlist name, right? And it'll select it for you. So I'm gonna just go through and select a couple of different ones, right? Or you can click on this, bo this box right here, this little white box next to name, and it will select all the playlists. Now, once you do that, you have the option to either copy these playlists into a CSV file, you can copy it into an Excel sheet, you can save them to a PDF, or my personal favorite, you can save it to an internal database in Playlist Supply. So I'm going to click save in my playlist database. You can see there it says it's saved. And then now if I go over to the top right and then click on my playlist database, it'll show me all the playlists that I've aggregated over time and have built into my own internal database. So this is what my database looks like, right? These are all the playlists that I've saved so far. And it just gives you a really clean way to organize your playlist to save all the ones that you've come across in one database so that you're not looking through multiple excel sheets searching through different pdfs that you got scattered all over your your laptop or your computer and your, your google drive and all that stuff right so keeping all the playlist data in one space that you can go back into at any point in time and just find them again and then you can delete playlists as you feel like you don't need them right like this playlist right here djr radio that hasn't been updated in 19,000 days damn right i probably want to get rid of that one so what i would do is just click the white box next to it and then click delete select it you know, click OK and then boom, it's removed from my playlist database. Right. So once again, a really cool way to just keep track of playlists that you come across that make a lot of sense for you. Ones that you want to keep in contact with, ones that, you know, feel like they would be a good fit for you. And what I would personally do is search through the playlist based on those criteria, find all the playlists that you that you do want to reach out to. 
and then over time cut out the ones that either you find have been you know not worth it or ones that just haven't gotten back to you after a certain amount of time like you pitch yourself to a playlist and like six months go by you can maybe shoot another shot and if that shot doesn't go through then you know pack it up get them off your list they don't even need to waste any space um and then once again you can also search playlists based on different criteria right so the criteria that i would recommend you build your playlisting around or your playlist searching around is genres right so like you saw i did rap you could do r&b you could do country music rock hip-hop whatever your type of genre is that's where i would start right but you can also do related artist keywords so let's say you're a rapper maybe you want to look for playlists that have like kendra lamar in the title or j cole or you know yeet or something like that right you can search out playlists that fit your demographic and see if those play uh, see if those artists have playlists that have been created around them you can also search out playlists based on mood so maybe you are a hype rapper and you want to look for like hype playlists or like party playlists or like excited playlists right maybe you make like lo-fi beats and you want to find chill playlists or sleepy time playlists or something like that right so you can make a list of different moods that may fit your music and see if there have been playlists built around those you can also look for playlists that are built around activities so gym playlists driving playlists workout playlists right running playlists um party playlists i know i said in the last example but i guess it's an activity right so you can list out different activities where your music will make sense for and then see if there are playlists built around those and then lastly you can also look for them based on um like lifestyle things like video game titles right like there are madden inspired playlists there are grand theft auto inspired playlists there are fifa inspired playlists there are players that are inspired by particular TV shows and movies and things like that, right? So things that people are kind of paying attention to outside of music, but someone may be looking to build a playlist around. And then lastly, you can find playlists based on platforms. So I found playlists before that have been like, you know, the best songs on TikTok or like TikTok viral songs or like Instagram hits or, or things like that, right? So you can search TikTok, you can search Instagram, you can search YouTube, you can search really any platform and then see if there are any playlists built around those as specific keywords and if you do your playlist searching that way you will build out a really holistic playlist network you will find a lot of hidden gems that other people aren't looking for because they're only looking for genre based keywords right and then your playlist network will grow over time and the more playlists that you have to pitch yourself to the higher chance you have that you actually get placed onto a playlist so yeah so i just wanted to show you guys playlist supply um it's a really cool tool it's not that expensive i believe it's only 19.99 a month so you know a, a drop in the bucket of the ocean compared to what you have to pay a playlist plugger to place you on some of these same playlists and i know that there are a lot of playlist uh, pluggers and pitchers who use tools like playlist supply to find playlists and then they just sell their network to you guys so you can come and use this network for yourself cut out the middleman and then that couple of hundred dollars to a couple of thousand dollars you would have spent on a playlist plugger you can just save it for other facets of your music marketing so only $19.99 a month. Um, if you're interested in purchasing it, I'm going to put a link to it in the description. So go and check that out. Um, and then just let me know how it works for you. If you have experience with it, hit me about it. Drop it in the comment section below. Um, but this is a really dope tool. I've used it myself. I have a lot of other marketing friends that use the tool. Once again, I know Playlist Pluggers personally that use this tool to build a network so that they can sell to other people. And if you are someone that is actively looking to build a Playlist Network, then this is a tool that would be really, really beneficial for you. So there it is, guys. That's Playlist Supply, a playlist pitching tool that will allow you to build your own network of playlists so that you can curate it yourself, find ones that make sense for you, and effectively cut out the middleman so that you can save your marketing dollars by not having to hire a playlist pitcher and a playlist plugger. Now, I'm curious to know, have you ever used this tool before? Is it something that's worked for you? If you haven't used this tool before, does it look like something that could be useful for you? Drop it in the comment section below. I love to hear you guys' thoughts on this and everything that goes around it. Now, other than that, if you feel like you learned something from this video, please like and share with one artist that you feel like needs this tool and could benefit from having something like this in their network. Other than that, once again, my name is Corey, and I'll see y'all next time.